you have found what lights you up. I'm your host, Sunny the Life Coach, and I'm here because I see you searching for something or someone out there to help you feel better, something to take away the pain that you're feeling, the inadequacies. I know all of the things that happen in life can leave you feeling empty. Your search is over. This podcast is all about finding your own freedom and power to love yourself enough to shine in the ways you were always meant to, the ways in which you are already fully capable of. If you're ready for some real talk, some serious truth bombs, and a few F-bombs, you are in the right place. Let's do this. Let's get lit. Hey there, welcome to episode 47. This week is not going as planned, so I'm adjusting the topic accordingly. We are having ourselves a bit of a winter here in Texas. You may have seen news reports that there are over 4 million of us without power. And yes, my household is part of the rule, not the exception. That's why I'm going to make this episode pretty short this week. I'm working with very intermittent bursts of power, sometimes 30 minutes, and sometimes we get a couple of hours of heat, light, and Wi-Fi, and the time in between, we're currently averaging between six to eight hours of nothing, and it's also been as long as 16. There's no end in sight, and it's five degrees outside. No leaving the house for anything, even just trying to keep the number of times that we open the doors to a minimum. The roads are a mess of snow and ice because Texas just isn't equipped for winter weather. Not even a little bit. I don't even think they stock snow shovels around these parts. So yes, this is going to be very quick, recorded with whatever battery power I have remaining on my laptop. And the next hint of Wi-Fi will be when I upload it to publish before it's gone again. Fun times. Now I'm going to be completely transparent and honest that not everything about this is fun. Let's get the darkness out of the way first. Don't go making excuses for Texas being a southern state that isn't used to this kind of weather. Our leadership knew this was coming and it was preventable. There could have been winterizing and planning measures put in place, but they were not because that would have taken time and cost money. In other words, it would have cut into corporate profits. This is not my opinion. There is actual evidence to support this. However, that's not what this episode is about. Yes, the blame and finger pointing are already in full swing, and I'm not going to pretend that some of it isn't warranted. My friends, thought work goes a long way towards supporting you during these challenging moments. That doesn't mean that you have to pretend that things aren't really happening and that I'm going to suggest you sit down and explore the thoughts that are leading you to feel outrage. You already know what those thoughts are and you may decide that you want to feel those emotions. You want to feel frustration and outrage. No, it doesn't serve you to be angry at the weather, but if you know this was a preventable disaster, have at it. Be my guest. Feel it all. I'm not here to change your mind. That's for you to do. It is always your choice. That is your agency and your power. The same way that it is with the global pandemic, illness, death, or any of the injustices in the world. Leverage the power that you possess to move through all of your feelings. Then decide whether you want to keep them. That's what I've been doing over the past few days. And my reality is that I haven't stayed with the anger or outrage for very long. Sure, I do go there. And then I move on. Because it's also times like these that we can just add to our memory banks for the future. That's how I like to look at it right now. Because honestly, what else can you do? Well, there are other things you can do, of course. We can stay angry and we can remain frustrated and we can continue looking for where to lay blame for this mess. I just don't feel that's helpful right now, not in the thick of it. 
Today, it's all about survival, and we certainly have it better than others. We do have shelter. We do have running water. About half of our faucets work anyway. We have a gas stove to warm food and make tea and hot chocolate. We have lots of warm clothing and warm blankets. We have plenty of provisions to see this through. We will survive. We will simply add this to the list of shit that's happened over the past year. Our son is not one bit sad about school being called off for the entire week either. So it's when things get awful that we have an opportunity to shift that gift of perspective that we have from what's going wrong to what's going right. And again, I'm not a look on the bright side type of person myself. I'm really not. My nickname of sunshine was born of complete sarcasm, in fact. What I am becoming much better at is not sinking into the worst case scenario and the despair that comes with doing that. Because this too shall pass. Whatever discomfort we are feeling right now is only temporary. How long? Of course we don't know. But eventually, this time will be behind us and we will simply be sharing our memories of it all. Hell, my husband King and I were doing that very thing just a couple of days ago, no less. Last weekend was Valentine's Day weekend, and King was already recalling 2004 in Kentucky when we had a crippling ice storm. We were walking out of a restaurant that year and the freezing rain was just beginning to fall. And we will definitely never forget that experience. When the power went out later, we said we would wait it out. But it turned out that we just couldn't. We literally got frozen out of our home. And to be clear, that time was truly all about the weather. We ended up living for a week in our friend's basement with our dogs. We slept on an air mattress. Yes, fun times. <laughs> but, but that was the deal. They had heat and we did not. They had electricity and we did not. And my friend's power means a lot of things. But I'm here to tell you that it is everything when there is an ice storm with widespread outages. You really do learn who your friends are. And ice storms can be so beautiful, yet so deadly. And I will never forget the sound of snapping trees, you know, tree branches like, like gunfire and watching those trees fall, hoping that one doesn't hit your house. It's a truly helpless feeling. Now, we also had a basement in our own house with a sump pump. If you don't know what that is, Google it. And I'm talking about the house that we had in Kentucky. I will just say that the pump doesn't work without electricity in our basement flooded. It's not enough for it to be cold as fuck outside the tree branches and the power lines encased in ice, but your basement is also filling up with water. Talk about a mess. And that year, we were without power for seven days straight. So I'm hoping that this outage we are currently experiencing in Texas doesn't last that long because there is literally nowhere to go. This current situation isn't about finding out who your friends are because everyone else is in the same boat. And we check in on each other when we can when the texts go through because the data is just very limited. Phone calls haven't been working for us at all in the past few days. Yes, this is also a bit of a damn mess. And we are creating memories. I have a friend in Ohio who messaged me earlier and said that he remembered as a kid his family was without power for 25 days. He said, we lived in our living room and we blocked off doorways with covers. Probably some of the happiest memories I have with my parents and brother. Talking about telling stories, playing games, doing puzzles, all the things. You also find out how to have quality family time really quick. Yes, we take our basic comforts for granted. The power that brings light and warmth in the cold. The Wi-Fi that allows us to communicate with others and stream our favorite shows for entertainment. The appliances that make our lives easier and make quick work of the chores like dishes and laundry so we can free our time up for doing the things we want to do. The fact that we are healthy and have remained so this entire year is also not to be overlooked. We tend to take those things for granted, and when they are taken away, we get to sit with ourselves, have real conversations, tell stories, create new memories, and just be. I honestly 
believe that all of the things that have happened out there in the world have been designed to get us to pause, slow down, and simply be with ourselves, with our loved ones, and to know that those we haven't seen in a while will be top priority in the near future. Now, I realize that many of you listening to this episode may not be in the same situation, but you may have been at one time. Perhaps you can relate. Just as King and I were recalling the generosity and hospitality of our dear friends years ago, maybe you've had a similar experience that you can draw and reflect on. Whether it's another trying time that you're going through now or one that you have been through, you just have to remember to take a deep breath and know that this too shall pass. Everything may seem messy and awful in this moment, but it is always up to you to keep your composure and your perspective through it all. Direct your focus on what's going right at this time. Our brains will naturally be drawn to the negative as mine has been. I mentioned that earlier. I'm not immune to negative thoughts. Remember, there's a lot of drama circulating in that space in your head. Mine too. Still, ask yourself, what's going right? What's simply okay right now? It's okay to feel just okay about things at times. It really is. I know that I talk about feeling better than fine no matter what, and that's true. That really is possible. You can be better than fine. You can be better than okay. And you can also accept either of those options when times are difficult. The choice is always yours to make. And that's what I want to show you. How to make new choices and how to find new perspectives when things seem a bit sideways. When life hands you these unexpected adventures and you need to adapt and adjust. Well, you just build a blanket for it upstairs and hope that it will be a warmer experience this evening. Bringing gratitude into the equation is always helpful and advisable. I'm grateful that I've held on to a closet full of old blankets that I wasn't sure I would use. They are coming in handy right about now. I'm grateful that my family and I are together and that we are safe. I'm grateful for all of the creature comforts that I get to enjoy when the power does cycle on, if only temporarily, like Wi-Fi and charging outlets. 30 minutes will do. And most of all, I'm grateful to take comfort in the knowledge that this too shall pass. Everything is going to be okay and eventually even better than that. As Rumi says, do not worry if all the candles in the world flicker and die. We have the spark that starts the fire. When things are their hardest, when you are faced with adversity, that's not only when you find out who your friends are, it's when you find out who you are. You've got this no matter what. I'm always available to have a conversation with you as long as my cell coverage is working. I'll drop a link to schedule time with me in the show notes. Let's do this. When everything around you is dark, that is your time to light up and shine on. 